One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. Kind of an interesting webinar that I was, was going to make because I kind of already made one on thesis building and I went back and looked at that one and that, that one was really kind of basic. So I, I was like, I could definitely expand on that. So if you haven't seen that one, uh, you should, it, it, it's really a kind of a simple one. It should, you know, it should be pretty easy to understand basically for the beginner. Um, that, that webinar will help you um, if you're binging this on repeat to watch, make sure you watch that one first, which, you know, really you should have, you shouldn't be handpicking stuff. You know, like ideally you kind of watch them all in order because, you know, there's progression there. But anyway, uh, anyway, so we're going to go over the market sentiment. Then we'll go over all the moves of the week and kind of, you know, pick the best ones, like pick the worst ones. What were the best spots, the opportunities that were available for some of the some of the movers that happened this week, some of the main ones. And um, then we'll get into visualizing ideas, kind of crafting that thesis, you know, honing it a little bit more so you guys can have better ideas uh, and Q&A all throughout the webinar. But definitely in that time, I'm sure there'll be some, some Q&A. So um, other than that, that's it. Let's get going. So definitely um, pre pretty, typical, uh, pretty typical market in the spread. You know, we kind of got this like one third to two thirds spread of winners versus losers. Um, on, in the small cap line, which is ideally exactly how you want it. Um, that gives shorts and longs both opportunity because, you know, it, it you know, it, if all the stocks are running, shorts are just getting run over. And if there's like no stocks running, then longs are just going to lose interest and we're, we're going to have no runners soon. So this is a bit, basically the perfect kind of mix that I like. Um, this is the market that I find the most enjoyable. Uh, where stocks are constantly popping, nothing's going batshit super crazy. That kind of, you know, when shit goes batshit crazy, it's really fun. But like the, the thing is, is that, you know, it's it's like when you're in a trade, like the, the market sentiment, the market cycles are ju it's just like a stock chart. Um, I just had a quick, oh, my God, a re recording. But th but I remembered. Uh, but it's almost like a stock chart. These market cycles, they come, you know, it's when if you're riding a trend on a long, I mean, or a short, but really on a long because it because it could go up a lot further, right? Shorts go in a trend, but they ultimately find a bottom because it's not going to trend to zero, right? But so long trends are normally longer. But you find yourself in a trend, you you don't you want that trend to just you want that trend to go for as long as it can before it goes parabolic because once the stock was parabolic, the trend's over, right? Once that stock was parabolic, now it's fucking time to sell. You kind of have to sell on that because if you don't. I mean, the, I mean, this is where the blow off is. This is where the emotion is. This is where the exhaustion is. This is where, you know, everybody FOMOs in because they've, they've watched the trend form and they finally just can't take it anymore. And they buy, 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 buy. That's good. That's signaling the end of the trend that end of that steady easiness. Now it's like fucking time to act. So while that batshit crazy market is kind of fun, it, it normally means that like, okay, backlash is coming and you know that like opportunity is probably going to dwindle for a little bit. And so that's kind of the way I feel it. So I prefer it, that we have this market forever, but it never, you know, it's never going to be that. It never stays the same forever. But this is my favorite market. And so uh, I hope it continues um, well into next week and the week after. Uh, everyone should eventually build into, build into trying new things, but everyone's got to, you kind of got to develop your niche first, right? That's kind of what I talked about in that. Um, in my podcast with James and Harry. I mean, I definitely think it's worth worth it. I and mean, I like to swing, but um, you gotta find that niche. You gotta, you gotta get that backdrop first before you try longing or try swinging or um, <laughs> the force takes time. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, you know, and basically I thought that because we were cooling down that like, you kind of have to be a little bit of range bound in your targets. And that kind of happens when range kind of dwindles. So, um, but we got our mover and it's, it's, it's bull time again. So uh, um, the theme for this week is this ought to even the odds. And the, when I, when I wrote this, I had um, this clip in mind. Let's see if it's loud enough. This ought to even the odds. You know, it's, it's, 
it's Disney and I got to input Disney and I, I've, I've been, I've been put at Disney in almost every webinar. I think Shang was in the last one. Um, Finding Nemo was in one of them. Um, but anyway, definitely MRN, even the odds. Oh yeah, your highness. Um, but and yeah, and that's what MRN did, right? Uh, last week it was kind of, we were kind of getting into the sell territory and MRN just kind of pulled us back over. And now we're in what I like to call the everyone's market because this market is literally for everyone. The control is even. Nobody, like shorts literally have to fucking watch out now. Longs are getting stuff too. Like CUN did, did not break range at all. Um, there's still a battle. Like if we were in a longs dominated market then um, on MRIN today, if we were in a longs dominated market, uh, this um, this would have fucking went to play. If we were in, if we were in a longs dominated market, that would have been bye bye. See you later. Uh, you know we're at twenty again, but we're not. Like I, I wouldn't call this a longs dominated market, but it's not a short, right? That's it, it's exactly in my opinion the middle. Uh, you know shorts. You know look shorts aren't longs aren't happy because this didn't happen. Shorts aren't happy because we reclaim. You know when nobody's happy, right? That's called a compromise, right? <laughs> So um, one thing that I've, one theme that, you know, kind of that I've noticed in this market is, you know, what I'm just calling like concentrated squeezer names. It's, and we kind of saw this with um, a little bit with ORPH and GLTO and um, ALF and now MRIN. And there was one more, um, there was one more that I'm missing, I'm sure. But, um, in this like almost like reddit mean stock like fashion um uh it seems like kind of what i'm calling the normal market like non mean stock like the the market that you know the small cap market without mean stocks have kind of has kind of adapted this kind of herd um thing on the longs which i didn't really see before maybe maybe it was there and i just didn't notice but uh i'm definitely kind of noticing it now is that um uh the the, anything that squeezes likes to become a little kind of mean stock for squeezing and uh it's it you know like everything but thank you so much for watching our video if you want to see more of our videos please subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking the button here we do our best to post a new video every single day if you have any questions about mic or any general trading questions please text tosh using the number here also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here